Former President Joe Biden is back in the news for another health scare, and this time it's something that one in five Americans will experience, skin cancer. Skin cancer affects millions of Americans every year. It's estimated that there's going to be over six million cases of skin cancer diagnosed this year in the United States. Yet there's still confusion about the different types of skin cancer and when you should be worried about your own skin. So what can we learn from President Joe Biden's skin cancer diagnosis and how you can protect your own skin health? Well, by the end of this video, you're gonna understand what basal cell carcinoma is and the most effective way to have it treated if it pops up on your face or your head. Celebrity health news often dominates the headlines, but beyond the political speculation, skin cancer is a condition that affects one in five Americans, and the rates of skin cancer are increasing every single year. Understanding Joe Biden's recent diagnosis gives us the opportunity to understand basal cell carcinoma and the most effective ways to treat it. And by the end of this video, I'm gonna to explain to you what basal cell carcinoma is and why Mohs micrographic surgery is the gold standard treatment when this appears anywhere on the head or neck. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Dustin. I'm a board certified dermatologist and I'm passionate about fighting the illness industrial complex to empower you to make informed health decisions so that you can get healthy or stay healthy. The illness industrial complex is basically anyone, whether it's inside the traditional health model or outside of it, that would try to scare you into making decisions or purchasing something that might not be the best thing for you. So I'm here to empower you by giving you accurate, unbiased information. We're gonna cover Mohs micrographic surgery in this video, but first you need to understand what basal cell carcinoma is. It is the most common type of skin cancer and there's usually over 3 million of them diagnosed every year in the United States. This comes from the stem cell basal layers of your skin. That means it's at the very bottom of the epidermis and those little cells that will become your skin cells actually turn cancerous because they get mutations usually from chronic sun exposure. Basal cell carcinoma doesn't usually pop up because of one bad sunburn, but it's usually the cumulative sun exposure that you get over the course of your life. And that's why most basal cell carcinomas appear in later adulthood. Joe Biden is the perfect candidate for this because he's elderly, obviously being in his 80s, and he's had a lot of sun over the course of his life. This isn't even the first time that he's had a basal cell carcinoma. I did a video on his 2023 diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma when both he and Dr. Jill Biden were treated for skin cancer around the same time. Basal cell carcinoma often appears in sun exposed areas like the face, sometimes on the arms or the trunk, especially for guys who might run around with their shirt off when they're younger. I know I did and I hope I don't ever get a basal cell. It's also common on the neck and the upper chest, particularly of women who might wear lower cut shirts throughout their life. If you see one on your skin, it's often gonna look like a pearly papule or a shiny bump. We like to say pearly papule in dermatology because it has a nice ring to it, I guess. These often have something called arborizing telangiectasias, and that means little blood vessels that look like a tree branching out. It's a characteristic sign of basal cell, and when I see it, when I look under my dermatoscope at a patient, I can almost always make the diagnosis even without a biopsy. We usually have to biopsy it anyway because of insurance companies, but that's a whole nother conversation. So basal cell carcinoma appears much more commonly in people who spend a significant amount of time outdoors. I had a patient that I treated in my mobile clinic last year who came to us and had nine basal cell carcinomas on the first examination. They'd grown up in a much sunnier state than Idaho and spent a significant amount of time working outdoors. And it was a devastating diagnosis for them to have that many cancers appear that needed treatment at once. Now that I've shown you some pictures of what basal cell carcinoma looks like, let's talk about Mohs micrographic surgery and why that is the gold standard treatment. When you have a skin cancer like basal cell, it doesn't spread inside the body. It grows in what we call a contiguous fashion, meaning that the cells stick together. And so it's not separating off from each other and sending an island over here and an island of cancer over here. They kind of grow in a ball and they can have a nodular appearance and grow up and out of the skin. Sometimes they're very superficial and grow wide on the skin, but not necessarily up and out of the skin. Because they grow in this fashion where all the cells stick together, we can do what's called an excision where we cut it out, put stitches in and we send that off to a pathologist, but that takes usually about a week to get the diagnosis back to tell the patient that the cancer has been completely removed. And it has a risk 
that if we don't cut wide enough because we can't see the edges of the cancer perfectly with the naked eye, that the cancer might still be in the patient and we have to go back and do a second surgery. This is where Mohs surgery is truly superior as the best treatment for skin cancer. Because when we remove a cancer using Mohs surgery in the office, we put a temporary bandage on the patient and they wait in the office while we process their excision tissue right then and there. We put it on microscope slides and look under the microscope while the patient waits. That whole process takes about 45 to 60 minutes, depending on the size of the cancer that's been removed. Once we look under the microscope, we can tell a patient with 99% surety that their cancer has been removed. And if the cancer goes to the edge of the tissue, we mark it out like the face of a clock, and we know exactly where the cancer is if we have to go back and cut a second time on the patient. As you can imagine, if we have to cut a second sample off of the patient, we will test that and look at it under the microscope again. And hopefully after the second time, it is all out. But if it's not, we may have to go back and cut a third time. And this is where Mohs surgery can get tedious and some patients don't like it because if they have a really aggressive skin cancer, they may be in the office for a majority of the day. I think the record when I have done Mohs surgery is having to go back nine times to cut out more tissue to make sure that we got the cancer all the way out. This is especially valuable in areas on the face, the head, the neck, the backs of the hands or over the shins. These are areas that I like to call high priced real estate because you don't have a lot of extra tissue to work with. If you have a skin cancer in the middle of your back, it's not the most devastating thing to be able to cut a wide area and get it out with almost 100% certainty. But if you have a skin cancer developing on the tip of your nose, as you can imagine, there's not a lot of leeway to cut a really big margin around there. With Mohs surgery, as long as we have the cancer clear by one millimeter, we know that that cancer is not gonna come back for that patient. So when we remove less healthy skin, it makes for a smaller defect, and Mohs micrographic surgeons like myself or Dr. Farrell, who also works in my office, are trained in reconstruction constructive surgery, almost like plastic surgery, where we can put the patient back together and make it look like we've never been there. This helps to keep scars smaller and the cosmetic outcome for the patient much better over the long run. In doing Mohs surgery, I've completely removed the tip of a nose from a patient, I've removed large portions of the ear and been able to reconstruct it in a way that looks almost perfect. So to jump back to former President Joe Biden, we can see on some of his former pictures, things that happened last year or a few months ago, there is a small spot up on the top of the forehead on the right side that you can see in photos. Now, I don't have a magnified view of this. I didn't ever look at it under my dermatoscope to really tell how big or bad it might have been, but we can see that there is a bump there in the area that he has stitches in these after photos. I even went back and looked as far as his 2024 debate with Donald Trump, and I could not see a bump in those photos. So this is likely something that has developed over the last year. And when you're prone to skin cancer like basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma, they can occur in a matter of a few months. This is why when patients have a history of skin cancer, we tend to see them every three to six months because a new skin cancer can develop pretty quickly. And the earlier that we treat it, the better outcome the patient is going to have. So knowing about basal cell carcinoma and about the benefits of Mohs micrographic surgery, how do you protect yourself and when should you go and get your skin checked? Well, first I recommend doing home skin exams. Get in your birthday suit at least once a month and check everywhere on your skin. This is a time where if you have a magnifying mirror, I'm actually okay with you using it. And you want to look for pimples that don't go away in a month or two, any spot that bleeds easily or is more tender than a normal pimple. If you have worked outdoors your whole life or you have a hobby that takes you outside all the time like fishing, skiing, golfing, boating, you are probably at higher risk for getting a skin cancer. And if you're over the age of 50, you definitely should be getting in and having annual skin checks with your dermatologist. Of course, if something is found that looks like a skin cancer or a precancer, you probably wanna go in more frequently and then get a biopsy if one is needed. Another way to help protect yourself is the regular use of sunscreen. I know there's a lot of debate about sunscreen out in the world. That is it safe? Is it not safe? Is it toxic? Is it an endocrine disruptor? The reality is that sunscreen has been proven to be safe and it has been shown to decrease the risk of developing basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma when used consistently throughout your life. And so I highly recommend choosing an SPF 30 or higher sunscreen. Apply it every day before you leave the house. And if you're doing outdoor activities like golfing, fishing, 
skiing, boating, make sure that you're re reapplying at least every two hours. If you're not big on sunscreen or you're afraid of the chemicals, you can use a zinc-based sunscreen, wide-brimmed hats, or sun protective clothing. If it has a UPF rating on it, usually a UPF 50, it's going to provide excellent protection. You don't have to worry about reapplying throughout the day, and plus you take your shirt off, but just keep it on. Being proactive about the way that you take care of your health will help to keep you safe. And if something does pop up, you're going to notice it earlier, get it treated before it has any devastating effects. With President Joe Biden having had Mohs surgery, we can be relatively confident that that cancer has been completely removed. Also, we wish him a quick recovery and successful treatment of his stage four prostate cancer that he's also battling right now. So our best wishes go out to him. Regardless of your political affiliations, we want to encourage good health and good outcomes for everybody. Have you guys ever had a suspicious spot checked by a dermatologist? If so, I want you to leave your story down in the comments to help encourage other people to go get their spots checked and let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys on the next video.